all the good Q&A puns are taken. In fact, even all the bad Q&A puns are taken. That's how clearly innovative and new this format is. So I'm not sure what to call this. I'll probably have to call it Ask a Ball Dude or <laughs> Getting Hairy with the Other John Brown. Anyway, it's I, John Brown, AKA the Other John Brown, AKA Todd, AKA many funny names referring to my aerodynamic head. And I've been uploading videos to YouTube for a little less than two and a half years now. And again, a little less than two years now, I've been uploading consistently. And in that time, I've really steered clear of overly YouTuber-esque things like no vlogs, no unboxing videos, mainly because I don't really understand the appeal of them. No Q&A videos like this, no reaction videos, nothing like that. I've tried to focus mainly on the technical aspects and just providing value. And the channel has grown much more than I ever expected. As I record this, I'm at 2,999 subscribers and um, yeah, the channel is progressing beautifully, which I never would have expected. And despite not really being very personal on camera, except for maybe one or two little um, segments in a few videos, you guys seem to be interested in me because I get asked now and then when I'm doing a Q&A video. And I didn't think I'd do one, but uh, I made a community post in which I asked if you guys had any questions and if the questions were good and interesting I might do a Q&A video so it's time to put my money where my mouth is or my mouth where my mouth is and do one because you guys came up with lots of questions that really gave me a false sense of self-importance and I'm going to try to answer your questions so let's get right into it let's start with the hard-hitting questions how many amps do you have I think it's a bad sign when you can't answer a question like that immediately and have to count the things and um, I had to do so and I probably have too many I have 21 amps 22 if you count my fried uh, Micro Terror, Orange Micro Terror 2, which I killed <laughs> trying to make that speaker break in video. I need to fix that. And um, yeah, that number fills me with shame. But then again, they all make me happy. So yeah, screw it. My buddy Paul asks, great idea. What are your bucket list speaker, cab, microphones, amps, or combos thereof? Soldano would be up there for me. Some pre rolla or old school greenbacks, beat up late 60s, 70s Marshall cab. And just like that, the shame is gone because I agree with you, Paul. The Soldano SLO is right up there. That's my number one bucket list amp, followed by a Fryette Pitbull Ultra Lead and probably then a Bogner or Bogner, depending on what you want to call it, ecstasy. When it comes to speakers and cabs, I don't really have any bucket list uh, speakers, but I do have a few bucket list cabs. I'd really like a diesel cab, preferably a front-loaded one, followed by a Bokna, a Bokna Uber cab. I'd really like to try one of those as well. And yeah, maybe a Friedman, but that's about it. Microphones, too many to count. I think I've got 20, 25 microphones, something around that number. You haven't seen them all on the channel because that's not really what I focus on, but I really haven't ever tried one of the Aurora Labs microphones. I'm completely out of that. Uh, Neumann make a few cool microphones I like to try. I only have the KM184. Um, apart from that, the Audio-Technica AT4050 is another microphone I'd like to try. Jay-Z microphones make the V67, Vintage 67. I know Nolly likes that a lot. I'd like to try that one too. And what else do we have? The Soyuz 1973 seems to sound really cool as well. And um, yeah, Universal Audio have those modeling mics. Those look really fantastic too. So yeah, those are just some of the bucket list microphones that come to my mind quickly. I'm sure if I thought about it a little longer, I could come up with a lot longer list for microphones. Microphones are awesome. My buddy Jacob would like to know, what's your favorite cheese? My favorite cheese is whatever cheese I can pay Kyle Bull to eat on live stream. Now, Sean Quirk and Brad Killingsworth have two very similar questions. Sean asks, hypothetically, you can't use a V30. Which speaker speakers would you load into your cab? And Brad asks, do you have a favorite speaker out of all the many speakers you've had on the channel? And the answer to that is probably the Lichtlam Audio LCF 150. That speaker really impressed me and it's my favorite speaker with the Vintage 30. But unfortunately that speaker is not yet available so I'll give you an alternative answer and that is the Fane F25 and the Jensen Nighthawk. I'd probably use those in an X pattern. You haven't seen either of those on the channel yet, they're to come and um, they impressed me a lot. I like the sound of those a lot. Alex JH3456 asks, when you would design a signature speaker, what would it look like, which qualities? That's a difficult question because I need to preface this. I don't consider myself 
a speaker expert at all. I'm in the lucky position to have tried quite a few by now, so I can tell you based on conversations with experts like uh, Ignacio from Jensen and uh, Molly Getgood, for example, and my own observations that my signature speaker, if, uh, or if I would design a speaker, it would have a ferrite magnet, probably fairly heavy. It would have a 44 millimeter voice coil and likely a slightly larger dust cap than the Vintage 30 has to take off some of the highs that are uh, that can be a bit disruptive close to the center of the speaker. The reason why I probably couldn't design a signature speaker very well is because I don't have a very discriminating ear for tone. Most of the speakers, when I make them up, sounds awesome to me. The guitar goes, I'm happy. But that's why well, that's one of the reasons why I include the Vintage 30 in all of the speaker videos as a baseline reference, because they all really sound awesome to me by themselves, but the Vintage 30, particularly those Vintage 30s that I use in the video, I know those sound good. That tone is tried and tested. So if I compare a whatever speaker I'm testing to that, and it still sounds good to my ears, then I know it's a good speaker. I, I probably don't have the expertise, at least not now, to actually design a signature speaker i'm just i'm just a happy consumer and uh, happy to share what i find with you guys it's not safe to swim asks without doxing yourself what is your day job first of all i love that screen name secondly i am an engineer and project manager i am an automotive engineer specialized in commercial vehicles my buddy jesper has several questions question is do you want to do a q a what are your goals for this whole youtube thing do you plan on quitting your day job and what is your day job what does your wife think I initially didn't really want to do a Q&A video because I just wanted the content to speak for itself, but clearly you guys are interested and yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to see where this goes, this whole YouTube thing. I never really had a plan for the, for the YouTube thing. It just kind of happened and I moved into it and I got way more of a response than I thought it would. I was self-conscious about everything, my playing, my appearance. I was a very hairy dude before I lost my hair. 12 years ago, I might find a picture of how I looked back then and I'll edit it in right now. So that really messed with me and the whole YouTube thing was cathartic in that way. I overcame a lot of my fears, as silly as it may sound. And, um, and I really felt appreciated. Uh, you guys, the community that kind of built around this channel is awesome, very supportive very educated you guys are just awesome i feel appreciated so much i'm basically just doing what i what i've been doing for years just with a camera in front of me so that forces me to be honest with myself and put a bit more effort into my playing for example and structuring things i don't really have much of a plan with this youtube thing i've i've been doing this for two years now with nearly almost every spare second that i have and I've been enjoying it a lot, and I, I plan to continue, just explore new things, do some experiments, look at alternatives, and try to provide value. That was my, my goal from the beginning. The most important thing for me was to provide value. And truth be told, I had considered doing YouTube years before, but, but my idea behind the channel hadn't matured enough yet. I really didn't see where I could add value. It was only it was only really when I was interested in the Dietzel Herbert Mark II and I was wondering how does it compare to my Mark I that I noticed there's there's no video comparing them. So you know, Gas One, I bought it eventually, loved it. And my buddy Kieran asked me how do they sound and I made a quick video with an amp switcher that I had the um, radio one. Uh, just for him, really, YouTube was a good uh, medium for that. It was unlisted. Nobody else could see it. But in the Dietzel Facebook groups, people were having the same questions. And eventually I thought, stop being a chicken and post this video. You complain that there's no video for these two amps comparing them. You have these two amps. Now you have the means. Why don't you make the video? And I was terrified. But eventually I felt brave enough to list the video publicly, shared in the um, Dietzel Facebook group. Uh, one guy noticed that I also have a demo and requested if I could do a video like those. And that's when it really clicked. Okay, I could do that. Sounds fun. Obviously, there's a need for that. I let's let's make an effort. That video is still up. 
It's got a long intro, my voice sounds funny on it, I'm very self-depreciating, very insecure, but eventually I did it. And from there on, it kind of matured and um, eventually I did show myself on camera. I explained why I'd been hiding behind it for a while and the response was, was great. People were so nice to me um, and it's been developing ever since. It's done me good, it's good for my head, it keeps me busy, and I feel like I'm, I'm adding value and there's an awesome community built around this channel. I know I'm repeating myself. I'm, man, I hope I can edit this together to something cohesive. Do I plan on quitting my day job? No, not anytime soon, because this channel is anything but profitable. Uh, it started actually making some money this year, but I still invest way more into it than I'm getting out of it. That being said, if I didn't have to work, this would, this would be all that I would be doing because this is this is all I want to do. I just want to play with cool toys and, and share the experience. So maybe the realistic goal for, I don't know, maybe two years would be to be able to balance it a bit more, maybe pull back a bit from my day job and do this some more because as of right now with my work and family duties, I have on average an hour a day for this. So for the last two years, I've put almost all my spare time into this and uh, an hour a day sounds like a lot, but these videos are a lot of work. I put a lot of thought into what video I want to make. I um, used to script them out, not so much anymore, but I do structure them. I put a lot of thought in how do I structure the videos so that they make sense, so that no, so that not as many open questions are left. Um, that is something very important to me. My methodology is, uh, that's, that's almost my USP in my opinion. I'm not a great player, I'm not a great producer. I don't think I'm terribly charismatic on video, but I think I have good methodology. So then I need to set up the cameras, I need to set up lighting, I need to film the playthrough, then I have to edit out all my mistakes, and they are plentiful. That's the reason why there are several different cameras that I'm looking into, so that I can edit this together so that it looks like I can actually speak and play on camera. I call out an awful lot of mistakes, and uh, I don't like jump cuts. This way I can just switch from one camera to the other, and you might not notice that it took me four different times or that this is spliced together out of four different sentences instead of one cohesive sentence. With experience, that's been getting better, but I, I still stumble over my tongue. Oh, no, I screw up a lot still. Well, sorry I went on a tangent again, but realistically, the output I have right now, which is about every 14 days, that's as fast as I can go with this hour. And it'd be really great if I could invest some more time into this, not necessarily to make more or as much money, but because I enjoy it more. This is more fun to me than my day job. And lastly, what does my wife think? My wife is the most supportive person I've ever met, like almost to a fault. I keep reading, I keep reading in Facebook groups of guys that uh, complain about their wives and Ooh, the wife won't let me buy another guitar. Um, I used to show my wife or wife-to-be photos of guitars and amps hoping she'd talk me out of it. Uh, or uh, just for fun, hey, look how pretty this is. And she'd go, oh, yeah, you should buy it. I got, do you want to eat this month? So, yeah, she's awesome. And, um, yeah, she deserved to be wifed. She actually deserved to be wifed much earlier than I actually wifed her. So, shout out to my wife. Flux asks, how about a live hang where you answer questions from viewers? I'd be there. That's a cool idea. I'm open to it. Uh, however, I, as I just mentioned, I only have about an hour a day for this and I can't really plan it so well as of now. And above that, I'd have to look into the tech, but maybe at some later stage, I'd be, I'd be up to that. I'd enjoy that very much. I like watching live streams from, from other creators a lot, like Kyle. I always enjoy Kyle Bull's live streams a lot. So yeah, maybe, maybe sometime in the future. Not right now, unfortunately. My buddy Baritone Goat Studio. What has been your favorite nickname given on the channel that directly relates to your lack of top fuzz? Speaking of fuzz, ever plan to do more pedal content? Oh, there's been so many and I've been enjoying them all. My favorite mean-spirited one was one guy left a comment recently that said, um, when did Devin Townsend start taking the short bus? And even in that context, being compared to Devin Townsend is a huge compliment. So jokes on you, I love that shit. Uh, apart from that, which ones were Agent 47 is a recurring one. Um, one dude said I look like yeah, young Bruce Willis, which I thought was hilarious. I don't think so. Um, I like referring to myself as Uncle Fester because I have large eyes. So um, Christopher Lloyd era Uncle Fester. 
Um, what else was there? Another favorite of mine was Speaker One Punch Man. Um, Noho Hank. That actor actually has the same condition I have. Um, just the other day, a guy messaged me on Facebook, uh, called me Skinny Gru. That was funny too. So yeah, keep them up. I love those. As to more pedal content, um, maybe, though I don't have anything planned. I'm not sure if that is very popular. I, I don't really have a lot of expertise with pedals at all. I've never been much of a pedal guy. But never say never, I might get bored with speakers and move on to the next thing. That's the, that's the great thing about this hobby. Guitar as a whole is such a huge field and I've been playing guitar for 20 years now and I've never been bored. There's always something to explore. If, if it's not playing, there's so much gear. You can get into pickups. I was into pickups for ages, guitars, um, amplifiers, preamplifiers, speakers, cabs, microphones, preamps. I could keep myself busy for years just doing yeah, just dicking around with gear. The KLiFi13 asks, do it. Would love to hear your strategy, thoughts around combining speakers in the same cab. Also, what kind of differences do you see between real cab mics and IRs? I'm a big fan of combining speakers in the same cab. Uh, most of the cabs behind me here have two types of speakers in them, and that's as far as I've gone. I've never used uh, three or four different speakers in, in a 4x12 but I know a lot of studio guys do that. So if you're if you're miking them, I think that's a good idea. It gives you a lot of variety. I, yeah, I'd have to test how that sounds in a room though, but um, between mics and IRs, it depends on the IR. It depends who made them. And if you're gonna blend IRs just to get an impression of how spe two speakers work together, the IRs probably should be from the same source, ideally from the same session, so same mic, same positions, same preamps, same levels. But if you have that, I personally think that is a good approximation of how uh, the speakers would blend in real life. So yeah, I, I my orange cab, for example, has two 1986 vintage 30s and two K100s. I have a Marshall cab with V30s and uh, Fane F70s behind me here. And, um, yeah, I, I, I love combining speakers in 2x12s as well. So, so yeah, knock yourself out. Oftentimes I find the speakers complement each other and uh, give you a fuller sound in the room. Monkey++ says, We'd love to know if you have thoughts about doing a cab construction comparison video to investigate why a person might want to choose one style over another for sound in a live or recording context. I've been considering doing that and I have a few plans. One thing is I have a Marshall 1960B somewhere behind me here that my buddy Chris sold to me for, for a very good price. It's a JCM 900 era 1960 cab and its build quality is shit as a lot of Marshall cabs unfortunately tend to be. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of Marshall cabs. I have, uh, I have five of them in the meantime, but the build quality is very hit and miss. Uh, the um, hardware is often loose. The plastic handles, plastic backplates, this particular one has a plywood backplate as well. The baffle's all loose, it's crap. And I want to do a test where I try to pimp that cab, like uh, putting in a stiffer center brace, uh, mounting that to the back plate, changing out cables, replacing the hardware, and just to do some recordings before and after with some uh, frequency response graphs to see if that just improves the durability of the cab or if it actually has influence on the sound. Another thing I'd like to do is get one of those Harley Benton 4x12 cabs uh, that they sell unloaded. Those are front loading cabs, but you can take the back off. You can uh, you could uh, theoretically rear load them as well. And I'd like to do a test with that cab. Just see how how is the build quality of that thing? How does it compare to some of the uh, tried and tested cabs that I have, like an orange PPC 412, Mesa cab, orange cabs. Does it sound good? And um, maybe do some speaker swaps in that, uh, front load it, rear load it, and do frequency response graphs of that. Just see how, how that affects the tone. Um, what I want to do, what I want for that is a cab switcher. I've been talking to KHE, and they're actually sending me one. I've, I bought an amp switcher from them as well, but UPS decided pretty much at the last station. Now we'd rather send this back to Switzerland, so that's been delayed, but um, I'm definitely gonna do something with cabs in the future. Oli Salara says, hello, question, something to test. 
Does the slant in a cabinet matter? i.e. recording left and right tracks from the same speaker in the slanted and straight positions. Given that there is a difference, say, recording the slanted speaker leads to better results, can we also get the same sound from the bottom speaker location by adding a slanted back wall to the bottom half of the cabinet's interior? Or perhaps it ruins the whole thing. Interesting question, and in theory that should matter, because the speaker doesn't just generate sound or, or pressure waves forward, but also backwards. And that sound wave bounces against the back plate back towards the speaker, which will cause phase cancellations uh, in some frequencies and what's the opposite of phase cancellation? A frequency buildup in other frequencies. And that is dependent on the distance to the back wall, I think. I think it's probably half the wavelength or something. Don't quote me on this. I'd have to think about that. I'm, I'm looking like an, like an idiot on the internet. But in a slanted cab, the back plate is at an angle. So it doesn't reflect straight back to the speaker, which will affect the frequency response in certain frequencies. I think Nolly and Kohler spoke about that in uh, Kohler's video where he interviewed Nolly about the Vintage 30. And that's a very interesting video. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you watch it. Um, I have no reason to doubt what Nolly said. Uh, my tests, if anything, have proved everything he's said so far. But I might just do that test because I have a Marshall 1960B and several 1960A cabs here. We might just do that test. Yeah, why not? Screw it. Let's do it. Don McSweeney Doomplugs asks, does the existence of Neural Amp Modeler and Dimehead's NAM player intrigue you? Yes, yes it does. NAM seems to be really cool. Somebody helped me make uh, NAM profiles of my Frams Cobra. And that really blew me away. It impressed me much more than the IK Multimedia Tonex. I have a Tonex pedal, but um, unlike a lot of my peers, I've had trouble falling in love with it. It's uh, cool. It sounds cool, but um, I find the interface very clunky. There's many things about the process I dislike, and um, yeah, it's, it's just not that much fun to me. Nam, though, the short time I tried, that was fun. Istvan Nagy, 9633, sorry I'm probably butchering that name, asks, Hello, John. What do you think about the Celestion G12 T75? Oh boy, um, I used to hate that speaker a lot because back in the day when I was playing in the band, we just had this uh, one Marshall cab in the rehearsal space, which was loaded with G12 T75s. And back then I was even more ignorant than I am today. I knew nothing about speakers and cabs. I thought guitar speakers, guitar cabs don't matter. I didn't even, I don't think I even knew there were different models of speakers and they sounded different. But I remember always struggling with my guitar tone in that rehearsal space, especially um, competing with the other guitarist who didn't have the greatest cab either. I think it was a 65 or 5 cab, but it was always a struggle until one time an English band, a touring band came through our little, little city village thing and they brought their cabs and I got to play, we opened for them and I got to play this guy's orange PPC 412 cab and I'd never sounded better. And that was my aha moment when I figured, okay, the difference is the cab. It's, it's apparently the speakers is the cab. And I tried getting a hold of a vintage 30 cab after that. And, uh, and I never played through that G12 T75 cab again. However, recently I've been made aware that the old T75s sound different. Um, Zen Amps, also on YouTube, cool channel have a Marshall cap from the 80s with all T75s in them that in one video sounded fantastic to me. I thought maybe I need to look at that speaker again. I, I've, from experience, I know that uh, vintage 30s from different eras sound a lot different. So the T75s, which are even older, I think, will probably sound different as well. And I recently picked up an old vented T75 from God knows when. And um, from the few short tests I did with that, sounded pretty good to me. So maybe I'll come around on the T75 again. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to think of it right now. I'm reserving judgment for until I've tested it. It's definitely not my favorite speaker, at least not the modern ones, but maybe I don't hate it anymore. Fiki or Fiki asks, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks. I hope this wasn't the most boring video we've ever seen. I'll reserve my own judgment until I've edited this. If you guys like this, maybe we can do this regularly, semi-regularly. I'll leave a comment below. Do you want to hear more of this? Was this the most boring shit you've ever seen? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my awesome Patreons for supporting me. And I hope to see you in the next video. We'll do some speaker videos and some amp videos next, I think.
Thanks for watching again. See you next time. Bye.